welcome back to the studio. I'm Jenna Morton. And I'm Tosh Taylor. And we thought we'd jump back into the studio with an old friend of ours. We've brought in a food freedom counselor. It's a pretty cool name, right? Okay. So here's the thing. We're talking with Tracy McLaughlin. Tracy was with us a couple of years ago. We had Tracy on the show. Uh, it was like the kickoff to a brand new year. And how are you going to like keep your New Year's resolutions up kind of thing and get fit and have fun? Be consistent. Don't Be, just yeah. make a resolution that's out of the blue and exactly. huge. Do things that actually work. Yeah, yeah. So since then, um, which we, must have been 2019 that we kicked that off, um, Tracy has done a major shift in her career, and Jenna and I are just in awe of it. So we thought it's it was so cool. Yeah, you guys are going to just be in awe of yeah, what, yeah. <laughs> what Tracy has done. So Tracy, yes, why don't you tell us <laughs> who you are now? Well, who I am now. Um, funny enough, because you mentioned that, I kind of cringe a little bit when you say that. Because at the time when you invited me, I was uh, part of an MLM company, Beachbody, right? Mm -hmm. And um, no longer part of that because I went through some major, um, I think you could call it trauma mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way with that company. Um, because I have been struggling with my weight, with my uh, body image since I was like young, 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 like probably in like as early as six, seven years old. And, you know, I have done the yo-yo dieting, I've done the no dieting at all, um, I've done it all, and I've always hated my body. And so I was with this particular company, MLM company, and I was um, promoting their products, um, feeling like, you know, it was the it thing at the time. Um, but I became extremely obsessed with food. Uh, tracking everything, measuring everything, it actually started to create a lot of anxiety for me, um, like significant anxiety, and um, to the point where I would avoid going places if I knew that there would not be food that was approved or appropriate for me to eat. Every time I went somewhere, um, like traveling and whatnot, I would bring all my food with me. So it was taxing, it was exhausting. Sometimes it was so overwhelming that I would just say screw it and not go. So like sometimes I wouldn't even go visit my family back home because I was like, I can't be bothered to pack all my food, mm -hmm. right? So that was kind of one thing that I was like, I can't do this anymore. There was also the fact that I was still doing all those things and my, I started to gain weight which I was like, I don't understand this. Why is it? Like, I'm still doing all the things that I'm supposed to be doing and I'm gaining weight. And when I, in my mind, shouldn't. And I also had a, I don't know, he must have been like maybe eight years old, my oldest, Sebastien. He started to, um, my goal was I want to teach them how to eat healthy, mm -hmm. right? I think every parent yep. wants their child to be healthy, you know, fruits and vegetables. So in my mind, I was teaching them all the right things right? Sugar is bad and you shouldn't eat this and choose this over that. But he started to get anxiety. So he, you know, one of the like turning point for me was like, he would say, mama, is there sugar in this? Is this bad? Should I be eating this? And it was for me like a wake up call. Mm -hmm. And I really stopped everything. So there was kind of those three things kind of came in at once. And I was like, I need, this is not right. Something's got to give. And so I started to research and be like, why don't diets work? And I think that was like my Instagram search, <laughs> like how diet sucks or something along those lines, right? And I came into this world of intuitive eating. And I started reading and at first I was like, that's a little, you know, is that really true? So I, you know, researched, I gathered so much data, I read books, I did it all. And turns out diets don't work. <laughs> uh, the data is there. Research shows that 95% of people who start a diet will fail. 95% of people. That's so I, number. what? That's a pretty high yeah. number. It's a high number when you think about it, right? So I have been, a, I'm a social worker by kind of trade. That's, that's my uh, livelihood. I've been a social worker for 20 years. And um, I had also gone back to school and did a uh, diploma in holistic nutrition. So I sort of bridge those two things and now what I do is I have a private practice that I launched a couple months ago and I help women make peace with food in their bodies. So getting to a point where 
there's no guilt around food. Helping them recognize the harm that diet culture has done, right? Um, and we're bombarded with messages from diet culture all the time, every single day, several times a day, right? So just being able to recognize that um, and getting them to a point where my, my, I guess my mission or whatever you want to call it is, you know, to help women. And I say women because that's the, 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 the bulk of the people that I work with. It's to prioritize their health without sacrificing their joy, mm. right? Like, so you can still be healthy. You can still, you know, engage in health promoting behaviors without the pursuit of weight loss and constantly wanting to transform your body, right? So there's another component of being able to love your body the way that it is now, right? And I'm sure you've, you've heard this, like if you don't love your body now, even if you do lose the weight, you're not gonna love it, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been there, done that, right? So it's, yeah, that's the whole thing that I'm doing right now. <laughs> it's amazing. I, and and I'm, Tracy and I are neighbors, so I've got to see the transformation in you. And I, it was funny, the other day, we, the kids were outside playing. Yeah. And you came over, like, and we're friends, like, we're, we're really good friends, <laughs> but it, it was, it's very rare for you to come outside and oh. to talk, and you came outside just to talk, and I, I said to my mom, because she was down visiting, I was like, Tracy has changed. Oh. Like, you wouldn't have done that. <laughs> probably because I was prepping food. Yeah, probably. <laughs> That's yeah. probably what it was. Like, it was, even now, like, I, um, one of our mutual friends, Lori McIsaac Fuster, who has a podcast herself, I was invited to be on her podcast about trauma and how our relationship with food may have been the cause of some trauma. Mm -hmm. And at first I was like, going on that podcast, I started to think and I'm like, you know what? Absolutely. Because it made me think kind of bad growing up, the messages that I received. And one of the stories that I shared was, you know, being 12 or 13 years old. And I, my mom put me on Weight Watchers when I was 12. And the, the only reason why it was 12 is because that was the required minimum age. Prior to that, Jeez. you couldn't. And I hope now it's not the case, yeah. like you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Anyways, other story. Mm -hmm. But I was 12, 13, I had friends, like a slumber party, and I was on this Weight Watchers diet. And so, you know, you rent, what did you do back then? You rent movies, yeah. you buy, <laughs> you know, yeah. chocolate chips, all the candies, and you just, you know, watch TV, watch movies, horror movies. <laughs> and that's what we loved. And so we went to the store and they were all buying chips and all that, you know, and I was there not buying anything. Uh. And that memory still, like, you know, that was many years ago. <laughs> and it's, it still, it still, it stills with me, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. Which is traumatic in a way when absolutely. you think about it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's mm -hmm. something that we have to, as, like, we're, we're mm -hmm. both raising daughters. We know, mm -hmm. you, you know, mm -hmm. what this. Yes. I, I know I'm really careful about the words that are coming out of my mouth because we grew up in like, you know, Seventeen magazine and Cosmopolitan <laughs> magazine times and I, my mother would have never said anything to me, but I know like it was, it didn't have to be her. It was, you know, everybody no, and else. It's, and, and it's the, it's not the, whether or not you heard the message from a parent or a, you know, an adult in your life, it, it's there. Mm -hmm. it is. And so if you don't hear an opposing message, mm -hmm. right, I think that's, <clears throat> that's the tricky part for us exactly. as parents is, is to be that opposing voice right. so that all of those other voices don't fill a void, mm -hmm. right? It's one thing for us to, to try to make those good decisions of, of, you know, modeling healthy behavior, not this versus that right exactly it's but it, it's it's such a tricky balance mm -hmm. and it's something that that we do spend a lot of time in our house as parents trying to figure out how do we bridge the gap between people who have different tastes and different wants mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know we want protein and they want junk mm -hmm. food and and to find a balance that it's not yes either or right. it's finding that right mix exactly and a big part of intuitive eating is really like reconnecting with your body right and learning to trust your body's messages instead of relying on all these rules that we've been told right mm -hmm. and so even with children which i know it's tricky because even myself i will catch myself um say well you shouldn't eat that or how about you you know but if we offered all the options, and it's true in the beginning, they might go for the less nutritious stuff, right? right? But if they have it there, it's giving them the opportunity to make their own choices, 
which, you know, when they're going for the choices that we're not super happy with, we're like, oh, well, right? So anyways, it's been, it's, it's still a journey for me. It's still a journey for me trying to navigate all of this because it's, when you have 40 some years of these messages, mm. right? And even though I talk about my experience and growing up, I know that my my parents did the best they mm -hmm. could with what they had, what they knew at the time. Mm -hmm. Life was right? different. Yeah. It was it was not so. I, there's no blame, right? It's more of an understanding now how the the things that was said to me and how they helped with my relationship with food, which was not healthy, impacted like my teens, my adulthood, all that stuff. Yeah, I think they and they were they thought they were protecting you. They did, right? absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's every parent yeah. who's who's doing that, right? So I think sometimes when I'm sharing some of my message, I never want it to to come from a place of don't do this, mm -hmm. right? It's more as an education because sometimes when you've you we, people get defensive, and I get it. I certainly was at first too, right? And they get like, well, you know, because nobody wants to feel like maybe they've been doing something that was not you know mm -hmm. the best thing or you know what i mean so it's always like a tricky thing to share this message i guess i find anyway yeah mm -hmm. yeah so let's talk about intuitive eating a little yes. bit more because yes. i want to know like <laughs> like intuitively i want to eat cake right yes that's it exactly <laughs> yeah, but i logically yes. know i can't yeah. just eat cake yeah. okay <laughs> so i want to like i i definitely especially being a vegetarian yes. i i find um i know when my body needs protein right i can i can feel it mm -hmm. if i need a nap it's typically because i haven't had enough protein mm -hmm. that day mm -hmm. so how do we start to to pick up on these cues and do you know like what kind of cues might mean what? Well, there's a, there, so intuitive eating actually just to kind of give some information was um, developed by two dietitians um, in, the, in the States and probably in the mid nineties. So it's oh, wow. been around, around for quite a while. There's lots of you know, research that has been done, peer reviewed views, um, articles, that stuff. So it is um, evidence-based, I guess. Um, so there's 10 principles. Right, and it starts from rejecting the diet mentality all the way to gentle nutrition. So there is nutrition involved in that. But sometimes before we're able to get to a point where, you know, choosing a salad has the same um, value as choosing a piece of cake. Like there's no good or bad food, right? right? And it's really, a lot of it is is our mindset, right? There's a lot of cognitive work sometimes that has to, mm. to go into it. Um, you know, the second principle is to honor your hunger. So that's one of the first thing is to being able to recognize when we're hungry, right? Uh, more than just the, the growling stomach. There's lots of different things that comes into physical hunger, like, you know, you were saying, needing a nap, right? Or um, sometimes it's just fatigue, irritability. Um, I get shakes, mm -hmm. right? I get like mental fog when I go too long without eating. So those are all signs of physical hunger. So one part is, you know, honoring that hunger when it comes up, right? Because your body has gotten to a point where it doesn't really trust you to feed it when it sends the signal, hmm. right? So in order for us, for the body to kind of get to a point where it's trusting you, we need to honor that hunger, right? And so sometimes when we engage in this process, there might be, if we've been restricting for a long time and we've been restricting the amount of food or certain food, there might be a period of weight gain. Right. And that scares a lot of people off, right? Because, I mean, diet culture and, you know, all the messages that we receive. So it, people kind of have that fear, right? But eventually our weight settles at what is kind of our comfortable weight. Okay may not be the weight that you want for yourself, but we have to think sometimes we all come in different shapes and mm -hmm. sizes, right? Like it's, it's it, you know, so striving to be the body in, you know, magazines and social media that have been airbrushed and that spend hours and hours to look like that, mm -hmm. right? And more than likely are restricting their food intake quite a bit. It's just not healthy. Right, so getting to the point where we accept all body types, no matter you know shape, size, you know all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's such an important part of it that you know so many of us struggle with that idea of just that there is not an ideal, no. and it doesn't. We are all born with our body type. We exactly. are that it exists. Yes. We can't change our DNA. No. We can't. You know, we do have to find that place of acceptance yes. of 
okay, this is my range. Mm -hmm. And within this range, what am I right. comfortable with? Exactly. I love that word. I love that, that word choice of yeah. being comfortable with your body. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think that, um, like I was saying, we're just kind of fighting against our our body, almost mm. fighting against our DNA mm. <laughs> in a way, right? So, mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing. And there's so much more than just uh, nutrition and exercise that comes into play, right? Genetics mm. is a factor. Stress is another factor. Sometimes where we live comes into play, right? Our, our lifestyle, our schedule, right? You know, I hear so often, like, we'll, you know, I'm sure you see those, like, fitness influencers will say, if I can do it, you can too. And, you know, if you have, you know, if you can spend 20 minutes on, you know, scroll on, on social media, I'm sure you can spend 20 minutes, you know, doing a workout. And maybe, but if I'm a mom, you know, a single mom, I have three kids, I work two jobs, right? And my 20 minutes of scrolling on social media is like at 8.30 when things settle down, I don't want to do a 20 minute yeah. workout. And I shouldn't be shamed right. for that either, right? No. Like if all I want to do is scroll, that should be okay, right? We shouldn't be shamed. The, the person that wants to do it, good for Same you. Same thing. That yeah. is awesome. Right, because that person is choosing and they must enjoy it, right? That was the other thing too with, with exercise. My relationship with exercise was starting to become unhealthy, right? So it's getting to a point where I'm moving my body in a way that I enjoy, right? And you move your body the way that you enjoy and vice versa. And not saying these are the workouts you need to do, right? right? Or you need to do cardio or you need to lift weights or you need to, right? If you don't like yeah. it, don't do it. <laughs> and that's another thing too, right, is that um, some exercises don't work for some body types. Yes, So exactly. if you're, you're plugging away on, you know, this exercise class over and over and over again, mm -hmm. and everybody else around you is getting great results, but you're not, it, that's not your fault. It's not your you're fault. Like, it is not your fault. Yeah, no. And yeah. that's the thing. But we feel like it is our fault, mm -hmm, right? Absolutely. And yeah. And we feel like our body is failing us when really the bo your body is not failing us, right? I, I always say your body is protecting you. Right. Your body is there to ensure your survival, right? So sometimes that's why, you know, it has a set weight, right? And sometimes we're fighting against that constantly when we're doing diets or these fitness uh, challenges and, and all, of, all those things, right? So, yeah. <laughs> What is that one at the beginning of the year where everybody does the it's like 75 a, hard? 75 hard. Oh. I watch those people and I'm like, sucks to be you, man. Okay. <laughs> oh there are some people that look like they're having a lot of fun they doing are. because that they the build thing. off that challenge and that's yeah. great. That is yes. not my personality. That yes. Me. That's no, why me. I haven't tried it. Yes. Because <laughs> I know. Absolutely. It yeah. is not for me personally. Yeah. Like, you know. Um, I just don't think that working out for 75 days in a row is is good for your body, right? Now you've been there though, you've I, done that. But I yeah. do strenuous things too, and yeah. I would never now, I know I've done in the past, and I have, sh the messages I'm saying don't do, I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I fully own that. I was that beach body coach saying, if you don't have, you know, 20 minutes a day, like, but I know now, so I, I, I own that, right? I recognize, and I recognize the harm that I may have caused. Right. I may have caused harm to others, right, in, in that message. Um, and I think once, I always say, once you know better, you do better. Oh, yeah. Right? And that's really has been my, you know, kind of journey to where I'm at today. Yeah. So eye-opening, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. I it's just, it's I know. so important to have these conversations about different ways to approach this because, yes. yeah, I think diet culture has been with us forever, right? I'm sure you can go back hundreds of years and find examples of this, you know, th these false narratives we've been creating about what bodies should look like. And those have changed over time, right? Yes. And I think that in of itself should show us there's no ideal. There's no, you, you just have to find you and, and do what's healthy. Yeah. What's healthy in terms of your mental health as well as physically what you're putting in your body. Right. There's a great, I haven't read it yet, so, but I am told it's a great book. Um, it's called Fearing the Black Body. Um, and because there's, with diet culture, there comes racism. Mm -hmm. Because one of the reasons was uh, women of color were sometimes larger. And so they, want, they felt that, of course, they didn't want to be that way, right? So they, 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 came, up, they came up with all these ways to control your weight, to control how you looked, right? So, and it's on my list of books to read. Mm -hmm. I haven't read it yet, but it is a great kind of 
like even starting point if you're looking to just learn a little bit about you know the toxic impact of diet culture mm. yeah. yeah so yeah there's and I think another thing that's important to realize and I'm realizing as I'm getting older and after you have kids and whatever how much our bodies change <sighs> like mm. you could be a scrawny little mm -hmm. fart growing up <laughs> and then things very drastically mm -hmm. change so it's 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 being comfortable with the you know the ever growing changes of your body as well, Absolutely. that's that's a major part. And how much you know mm -hmm. intuitive eating, even as, let's say you were someone that did it in your thirties, that same intuitiveness is going to be different in your forties, absolutely, and in your fifties for what absolutely. your body needs, right? Absolutely, yeah. right. Yeah. And it really is about reconnecting, right? I, I, your body talks to you all the time, right? It sends signals all the time, and often we we ignore them. Right, because we're busy, life is like you know, children and work and all these things. But we get messages from the body all the time. So for me, it's more than just intuitive eating, but it's really intuitive living, right? So I really kind of go with my gut. Like if I'm tired, you know, I will sleep. If I'm if if I need to skip a workout, I skip a workout. I no longer feel guilty about that, right? I also you know even like I spend time with people that I want to spend time with, right? I don't force myself to be around people that just don't bring me joy, that don't fill mm -hmm. my cup, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, like that, that's kind of all part of it too. So yes, there, it's called intuitive eating, but it's so much more than that, right? It's a way of living, really, right? right? Where you really trust your gut, right? You trust your intuition, yeah. It's amazing what aging can do for us. Huh? <laughs> I love it. So there, there yes. are ways, like you said, you have you have a social worker background. Yes, I do. And you mentioned in the beginning that now um, you're you've started a couple of months I, ago yes, online, I, uh, I, and people can reach you all over. They right? can. Like they don't have to live here in the Greater Moncton mm, area no. to be in contact with Tracy. So let's let's talk about that because you very quickly got clients. I did. Yeah. I was a little surprised. <laughs> I was not expecting it. Um, I've been working in, like, I, my, my main job as a social worker has been in addictions and mental health. So I've been doing that for the past 15 years. I'm still doing it right now. And um, didn't expect for this to kind of take off the way it did. Um, but it's awesome and it's amazing and I, I, I love it. I love it. So I can be reached on Instagram. Um, I, it's just Tracy.McLaughlin. Uh, that's my Instagram handle. Um, even on Facebook, I have a Facebook page which is still under Tracy McLaughlin. Um, I need to change that to my business name. Okay. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. It's just, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah. And um, I also have a, a profile on Psychology Today. Okay. So people can go on Psychology Today. They can. I'm in New Brunswick, Moncton, New Brunswick, and they can find me there. Amazing. Fantastic. I think uh, it'll be interesting to hear from people the different ways they think about their relationship with their bodies and food. As uh, you know, I think over the next couple of years we're going to see a, a real shift in people, so. and this is the, the the front of the wave. So I think so because I've been in this world for a while, and just people are talking more about it. So you're starting to hear it more and more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming in and kickstarting this conversation with us, Tracy. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We'll uh, chat with you again next week. Okay.